Okay, in the last lab, you inoculated um, the urease or the urea slant to look for the urease test, and you inoculated the um, litmus milk. So I wanted to go over what kind of reactions you're going to be seeing. So we'll start with the urease. So if a bacteria produces urease, that means that they have an enzyme that breaks the urea, which if you recall is the breakdown of protein, um, into ammonia. Okay, so ammonia is a basic compound and it's going to lower the pH. So the original tubes that you started with were this peach orangish color. Okay, this has phenol red in it that when it turns, when it goes basic, it'll go a hot pink color. Um, remember with the fermentation of carbs that acidic, it went a yellow color. So your original tubes were orange. Um, the picture in the book is a little bit off compared to the color of tubes that we had. So um, don't go so much by the brown and red that you see in the book. Go by the, whether it looks orange or peach or whether it looks pink, hot pink fuchsia. So right here is one that's completely pink, okay? This one here um, is still orange. This one here is kind of half pink, half yellow. What you want to look at is even though it's still the yellowish color or the um, peachish color at the bottom, it's pink at the top. So this one and this one are both positive, but this particular bacteria just produced urease at a faster rate than this one did. They're both positive, but at just different rates. Now the first thing that you want to do, as with all of them, is make sure you have growth first. So this particular tube, I don't even see growth on. So I wouldn't call this a negative result, I would write no growth. Now what you should do is if you have one that did not grow, check with another group and see if they did. Because you want to look for growth before you determine a result. So on most of the ones I have here, the ones that, okay, this one, has growth and it's barely just starting to change, okay? So um, it still looks pretty negative to me. And these have been sitting for almost three days now. So that's the urea slant for the urease test, okay? Now the other one was the litmus milk. Now the litmus milk can produce a lot of different reactions. Um, one bacteria can use lactose and ferment and cause an acidic reaction. One bacteria might use the peptones and go more of an alkaline reaction and, and do that proteolysis. So with the um, litmus milk, recall that your original tube was this kind of bluish purple color, so it's more of a, not so much purple as it is blue, okay? And so what you wanna look for with the reactions is if it goes acidic, you're gonna get a pink color. So both of these have pink on them. Okay, as opposed to this bluish purple here. So even though this looks a rose color, it is considered pink. Okay, so both of those have gone pink, so they're an acidic reaction. The other thing that you want to look t with those is they also have white on them. So the white, if you recall, if you look back on the page of your book, you have this one page that has all the different reactions in the different colors. So um, not only that, you have the white here, which, which means reduction. So you had acid and then you had reduction, and it's solidifying. So now you're getting that curve forming. So some of these that have gone for a while are starting to form the curve. So that one is, um, and remember with a curve, you wanna look for a solid mass for an acidic curve. So these have been used by other students, that's why I'm kinda of tapping on them. Um, don't you go tapping on things too much. <laughs> Um, before you determine your results, okay? So if it goes to that pinkish rose color, that's acidic. Now this one here and this one here are the kind of the opposite reaction. These ones are forming, um, we have peptidose, pept, proteolysis occurring um, where the proteins are broken down. So you have the media itself has turned translucent, meaning the milk particles are not in there anymore because the protein's been broken down. So you have like an amber brownish color, and then um, some of them also have curd formation at the bottom. The other thing that you wouldn't look at, especially with this one, um, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a ring of bluish purple at the top. You probably may or may not be able to see it, but remember that the original was the purple, so it's gonna stay close to that original color. Um, 
and then you have the also have another curd formation down here. Um, those are the two major reactions. So look for the pink or the purple first, and then start looking for if you have peptonos, peptonization or proteolysis occurring, where you would have um, that amber colored, more of a clear liquid rather than a white milky substance, okay? So this was the urea test, the urease test, and the litmus milk.